Aloha, good morning. My name is Sunny Savage and today is day two of the Eat Local Maui Challenge here in the year 2021 since we have been doing these challenges for many years. Um, this morning uh, it's early. I'm getting ready to send my kid off to school and I'm making breakfast and lunch and am foraging some wild greens. This one is Chinese violet. Uh, it's not a vine, but it certainly can crawl up other plants like this katuk here. Uh, we eat a lot of this green, but we only eat it cooked, not raw. Uh, so I'll just harvest the leaves off of this square woody stem with opposite leaves, smooth leaf margin. Um, yeah, just picking these off and we'll have some nice plentiful wild greens. The other green that I'll be including in breakfast today is the uh, is a plant that I grow, cultivated. Uh, it's called, by many names, edible hibiscus, uh, bele. Uh, yeah, so I just take off the whole thing and you can eat this one raw or cooked. And it is, oh, it's just such a great plant in my garden. It's doesn't hardly need any water and it's always producing. It's easy to cultivate. So yeah, it has a slight mucilaginous uh, um, quality to it, but you know, it's um, really delicious. Of course, highly nutritious. So yeah. all right. So those greens just made it onto some beautiful local eggs that were gifted from a friend. And uh, this will be eaten with some bacon and uh, I'm actually going to throw on one of my secret ingredients. I love um, fermented or salted uh, lemons. I have a lemon tree in my yard and so I preserve these lemons and just love cutting them up into little bits for delicious flavor bombs. Um, on the side, I'm going to put some tomato sauce that I made. Of course, I'll be putting some salt and pepper on here. And uh, for my kids' school lunch, I'm gonna put a little bit of that bacon with some uh, nice sweet potato. And uh, for snack, he's gonna have a banana and I made some Java plum banana fruit leather. So yeah. Added to the breakfast, I just wanted to say that we have some mamaki tea with uh, lemon balm in there as well. Hey, so it's lunchtime and I just polished off uh, some of the leftover eggs that we had from breakfast. Uh, I did put some Balimbi pickle, uh, which is a delicious oil pickle that I make out of uh, Balimbi that I grow. Um, I'm gonna have a smoothie as well, and I just want to take the opportunity to talk about moringa. Uh, I make moringa powder. Um, there are other parts of the plant that are also edible, but um, if you've heard in health and wellness circles about sulforaphane, which um, is uh, so highly touted in broccoli sprouts, just know that we here in the tropics and subtropics have moringa, which ha is loaded with isocyanates. Um, so really, really healthy uh, stuff that's being researched for all kinds of things. For people who have H. pylori, um, it, you know, digestive issues around that. Um, it's also being implicated in autism as, uh, you know, a, a powerful supplement. Um, anti-inflammatory cancer, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot there. So anyways, um, my smoothie, I'm gonna add a hefty amount of moringa powder along with some of the coconut milk that I made yesterday. And uh, already in here I have some frozen bananas and ice.
All right, so I wanted to just show you how to process cassava, because if you're not familiar with this plant, you have to know that when you um, get it at the farmer's market or a grocery store somewhere, it's gonna have this brown skin on the outside. But it's not like you just take that thin skin off. You actually have to um, uh, take your knife, and I like to just kind of gently go in and then turn my knife to the side and turn my knife to the other side and just keep working down the length of your cassava or yucca root of course it goes by so many different names tapioca um so yeah you want to get this this leverage here because you actually um, need to peel off this entire layer, not just the thin brown on the outside, but there is a, another layer that kind of protects all the goodness inside. Once you get an edge, then it will peel off fairly easily. Just keep working your hand underneath it, and then this whole thing comes off and separates. So um, yeah, then, you can take this and boil, fry, or whatnot. Now, I do have a low cyanide version. I know that sounds scary, but just remember, this is the most widely eaten food on the planet. Um, so yeah, it's a low cyanide version, so I'm just simply gonna grate this, have a bunch of oil in the pan, and fry it, you know, kind of like hash brown style. But there are some varieties that, um, you know, you might need to cook first and then, um, prepare how you want to prepare. All right, so I grated the cassava and I actually grated some burdock as well. Um, and I had some oil in the pan, some local olive oil, and uh, yeah, kind of made hash brown style. I am boiling some as well. Um, that's for another project that I'm making some crackers out of. Uh, and then we're just gonna have a little salad uh, with the, um, the mash. Zeb is actually gonna have an egg with his and I'm gonna go heavy on the salad. I'm also gonna have some uh, homemade tomato sauce and I'm gonna top the salad with some Haulikoa seed crunch. So yeah, here we go for dinner.